Hi, my name is Andrew McLaren, and today we're going to be talking about the Next Generation Science Standards, or the NGSS. Essentially, I want to make a video for the teachers who look at this and go, oh my god, I don't even know where to start. Uh, this is a lot. There's a lot of colors, there's a lot of numbers, um, there's a lot of like vocabulary words, essentially, with like evidence statements, disciplinary core ideas, all that stuff. It's super overwhelming, right? So I want to make a video to help you out. Um, and to do that, we're going to talk about uh, why they're, they're structured the way they are and why you want to make this adoption. Then we're going to talk about the resources they provide. And then I want to start like big picture and look at the bigger scope and sequence, then understand like the naming conventions, and then look at like an actual performance expectation. So we'll kind of go big picture and then zoom in. And then we're going to... Um, look at how this applies between the elementary, middle school, high school level, and understand the huge benefits um, to the overall instruction after learning how this is structured. Because you can't really understand all the efficiency pieces until the end. So it's kind of like the why, but a little bit deeper. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get going. So it's important to understand the NGSS because it helps you understand what uh, your students are going to come in with understanding and what you need to have them leave understanding for the next class. So that's very important to have uh, make sure we're all kind of on the same page. And this is also a national science uh, standards set. So we're all trying to get on the same page so that kids going between states are getting similar sort of instruction. And it's also really, really important that we um, are highlighting the practices. So the big thing with the NGSS is that they realize kids um, memorized too much information and they had all these lists of things memorized, but they couldn't actually build a model. They couldn't actually design the experiment. They couldn't ask real questions. And so the NGSS was written in a way to highlight those. And so you'll see that we're moving away from um, just being content or disciplinary core ideas or DCI and we're going to focus more on what they call SCP or practices um, explicitly in instruction and in assessments. If you're trying to improve your test scores I would I would pick like one practice and really get good at that um, maybe doing like the uh, modeling or the evaluating information with the CER that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's the why. So I want to go over a few things. Uh, first of all, they have a ton of resources on their standards, like just all around them. And we'll go over that soon. But I want to start with the big picture. So if you just Google the NGSS, you'll get to nextgenscience.org, which is their main website. And this lets you search for individual standards here. Um, but the main thing that I really, really like on this website is the understanding the standards. This is pretty good. They've got a short little video that goes over some of what I'll go over here. I'll go more in depth as well. Um, but they've got a couple good documents here that could help you um, just kind of reread and see this information a different way. Now, one that I think is absolutely essential to highlight is um, the abbreviations, this little glossary because we use a ton, a ton of acronyms in um, the NGSS. Uh, the big ones are going to be like SCP for your practices, um, DCI for your common core, or the, um, where is it? DCI for your disciplinary core ideas, and cross kind concepts for the CCC. Um, those are going to be the big three that you're going to see a ton within the NGSS. But a lot of these other ones are going to be referred to in this video so uh, such as ngss right that's the the name of the standards um so just be aware and be careful uh because i know it can be a little bit overwhelming um, but if you have that resource open next to you that really can help you with with getting through some of that that initial oh no this is this is not good <laughs> right so check out this understanding the standards page um pretty good. Also, I will be referring to the topic arrangements more in, later in the video.
With the NGSS, the recommended scope is integrated, meaning that there's a little bit of life science and a little bit of physical science and a little bit of uh, earth science all in one year. And so all years in middle school, they're intended to be a general science class. And you have all these different domains of science in that one year. Uh, so for example, California and Oregon have adopted that sequence. And this is a recommended sequence that's in Appendix K, which is very, very large. Um, but I do want to show you some of the figures because it helps you understand how this is structured. Uh, in general, uh, for middle school, all the standards are just de designated as middle school standards. They can be covered at sixth, seventh, or eighth grade. They do give grade levels for elementary. So like, oh, this one should be covered at second grade. Um, but there's so many connections between these standards, there's a ton of different ways to order them. They just gave a recommend sequence for the elementary. Uh, it, what's really, really nice is that if you follow these recommended sequences, they build off of each other. So each year kind of builds off of the previous year. Um, so simpler things can be covered at sixth grade and more complex things can be covered at eighth grade. So I just wanted to, I know some of you are gonna be like, oh no, this document is way too much, right? But the, the main thing here is that we've got a couple figures that are useful to just briefly look at. So if we've got some domain like physical science, then it might have some disciplinary core idea. And then you can break that down into a couple different components. And you can kind of see like PS1, that's physical science one, and then physical science one A, so it's being broken down into other smaller pieces, right? Um, in general, if we look at the whole course, you're going to have some some core idea, like some physical science idea there, where understanding how matter works, that's gonna be important for understanding how cells work, right? And then understanding how cells work is gonna help you understand uh, an ecosystem and evolution. So these things, they, they build off of each other concept-wise, and they've been included where they are for good reason. So if you go into the nitty gritty details of each standard, you'll see those, those connections for each one. Um, and again, this is kind of like sixth, seventh and eighth grade, because this is middle school. So here's another recommended sequence. So it's like, okay, you could have all of this stuff in sixth grade. So you can see there's a little bit of physical science, a little bit of life science, and a little bit of earth science at each grade level, right? Like I remember doing um, water cycle in sixth grade, and then you do like tectonic plates at seventh grade, because that's, that's a little bit more complex, but convection currents, if you understand convection currents with the water cycle, that, that will help you understanding the convection currents in tectonic plates. So there's, there's a lot of connections kind of like that between the grade levels. Um, and the, Again, they've they've got a couple different recommendations of how you might pair these things up. Uh, but this is just kind of shown a slightly different way. So you've got like, okay, we've got these standards for sixth grade, these for seventh, and these for eighth. So that's kind of telling you um, these would be performance expectations and these would be the, the larger disciplinary core ideas which could be tied to those. So yeah, there's a lot going on. I know a lot of numbers and letters, which we will get to soon, but I just kind of wanted to have you understand that they've got um, some subjects in sixth grade, which will then be used to help the seventh graders and the eighth graders. Um, and you know, the eighth graders don't need to waste their time on easy things. You can teach that to them at sixth grade, right? So that's the overall uh, goal and structure of the NGSS is that it really is intended to be integrated um, but you can also d split these up different ways. And if you want to read more about how it could be split up, um, like Appendix K shows, oh, you could also split these up by uh, the domains and have different classes based off of just doing all physical science one year, life science another year, earth-based science a different year. So they do have recommended sequences for the um, if domain approach if you're going to try and do one domain per year. But um, a lot of districts and a lot of states have gone with the, um, the integrated approach where you've got a little bit of each of these together. So yeah, that's the, the scope and sequence. Uh, 
there isn't one recommended series. There's a couple different ones based off of how they um, they reinforce each other. Um, like what we saw in the this figure right here, where it's like, okay, these things are going to help you understand those things, which will also help you understand those things with these arrows. It's like reinforcing or prerequisite understanding. Okay. In the NGSS, when we talk about standards, we're really talking about performance expectations, which have a common structure to them. I'll talk a little bit about that, and then we'll talk about the three dimensions, which should help you understand a little bit more about what I'm talking about here. So the first part is the grade level. So it'll tell you like, okay, this is middle school, high school, and if there's a number like one, two, three, four, or five, that's going to be elementary. So that's going to always be that first part of the performance expectation. Then in the middle, you're going to have something like life science or physical science, like PS, or earth-based science, which is, I think it's ESS, and then there's engineering as well. So that goes in the middle here. And then each domain can be broken down into a couple of different parts. So there's like LS1, there's LS2, LS3, LS4. So there's a couple different parts of life science, which um, they've arranged and given them numerical designation, designations. And then for the actual performance expectation, there's like MSLS1-1, MSLS 1-2. So there's a couple different performance expectations that are closely related to each other. So that last part is going to tell you what the performance expectation is. That middle part tells you the domain slash arrangement within the domain. And then the first part kind of tells you the, the level or age of the students at that point. Um, so if we look at an example, I believe we've got MSPS2. So this right here has a couple different performance expectations on it. So like this is this is one performance expectation. This is another um, MS PS2-3 is a different performance expectation. So these are there's five different performance expectations here. They're all for middle school. You can see they all have middle school. They're all within the same um, DCI because they're all PS2 but they're slightly different um, standards or performance expectations. So that's the, uh, the naming convention on them. And um, what's really, really cool is you can actually look at these, like um, you can look at the disciplinary core ideas and actually search for those on, on their website. So if you go on to the Next Generation website, you can um, you can do these searches where you search by um, like PS one A, and I think that I've got that search already done here. And then you can see, okay, well, there's that one disciplinary core idea. It looks like it appears in second grade, fifth grade, a couple in middle school, and a couple in high school. And so yeah, like PS one A is right here. This is that disciplinary core idea. And here are some standards or performance expectations that are related to that uh, disciplinary core idea. Um, also, how I how I did that, if you go to the NGSS, you can go to advanced search. And um, I think I did the topical arrangements. And then I just did like, yeah, this one. So you can search for a different thing and see where does it come up in other standards as well by searching there. Um, yeah, there's a ton ton of different ways to go about that. The performance expectations in the NGSS have three dimensions to them to contrast them with old standards. Most standards traditionally just had like something the kids needed to understand or some sort of content in there. The NGSS, yes, it does have that DCI or disciplinary core idea, but they also highlight some sort of practice as well as larger concept like scale and proportion and, and that kind of stuff. So the practices, this is going to help you pick an assessment that goes with that standard. And I'm working on a video on how to do that. So like, for example, like CER should only be done 
with certain practices. Modeling should only be done with certain practices. So if you're trying to figure out how you're going to assess for a certain unit, you need to look at these practices that you were supposed to teach them so you can measure those skills as well as their content understanding. So that's kind of the, like the reasoning behind the three dimensions. And if you look on the side here, we have an example of where these, um, these dimensions are when you look at them on the NGSS website or a printout. So there's usually something in the top here, like a performance expectation. So like one LS1-2, that's gonna be a performance expectation. So that's kind of at the top there. Then if you look, they have the practices and it even tells you what the practice is right here. And then they also have the display core ideas and they give you the designation for that core idea that this is, remember this is that um, life science. And then this is um, part one of life science and then a sub part of that part B. So this is display core ideas of life science about life, about the plants and um, animals and their, how they're trying to survive, right? So that's, that's some content. And then patterns, that's the big picture cross kind concept that we got highlight here. So they, they bring to the forefront these things that typically are not measured in assessments and essentially say, hey, you need to focus in on this a little bit more at this point with this unit. And they pick them for good reason. They picked ones that go well with them. Um, also, there's these connections in the bottom. If you scroll down, they'll give you connection to other disciplinary core ideas, as well as common core standards. So this might be your, your math and your, um, and your language arts. But if you click on these things, they'll actually take you to other disciplinary core ideas and um, where they're being taught. So like this standard right here, talking about the parents and offspring is related to um, animals forming groups that help them survive, right? So that's like animal reproduction and groups of animals definitely closely related. So you can kind of see how it's related to certain things and that's in consideration, they use that for building um, the scope and sequence, like, oh, this will link to that, which will link to that. And that helps you build the that web that they did, that I showed in the previous part. So you might look at something like this where they're showing a single performance expectation, but the NGSS also will, will show them bundled up together. So this is, um, as you can see, both parts are, are LS3, middle school LS3, and then part one and part two. So there's the first performance expectation and the second performance expectation there. Now, I really like doing this online because it gives you these little pop-ups which will pop up over the, um, the different parts of the standard. So it'll tell you like, oh, this is that practice. This is those disciplinary core ideas. And then we've got that uh, cross kind concept and other display core ideas. Excuse me. Also, you can do um, you can highlight based off of the cross kind concepts and the practices just to see where they are in there. It's just kind of a nice little way of seeing how they've broken it down in there. And um, I do have a whole video going over evidence statements, but this helps you figure out day to day how do you get to those larger performance expectations. So this is like maybe like a week worth of instruction. And then uh, these performance expectations, as you can see, they go with that, that performance expectation. It's got um, the evidence statements down below. This might be like, oh, this day do that, that day do that. Um, helping you structure that out a little bit more in detail, right? Then they also have them bundled into little units if you wanna see how they've, they've got them bundled, but I typically don't. So we've got an example of uh, these performance expectations in this um, subject of life science uh, arrangement three. I think it's disciplinary core ideas arrangement three. <laughs> I'm pretty sure is what they're calling that. But you can see these are all middle school. They're all physical science. They're all 
related to motion and stability. So that's the title for the um, that arrangement. And then you can um, color code them like we did on the other stuff and kind of see like how they, what they're made up of with those three dimensions. So we've got all these different performance expectations. And as you can see, um, each one of these is a different practice, right? So it's the same content, related content, but they're doing different practices. And it looks to me, I haven't actually looked at all of these, but it looks like we have some different uh, cross kind concepts. Yeah, cause and effect, models, stability and change. So there's a couple different things that are being taught throughout this unit in terms of those other aspects of science to help them be uh, evenly covered, I guess. Um, yeah, really, really cool. Here's another, this is good to see as well. Here are, here's a list of the um, practices or the SEP. So that first blue box, it's gotta be like obtaining, evaluating, communicating information. That's one of the eight that you've got here. It's actually number eight right there. So they're gonna be picking one of those practices and then, um, so this is like developing using models, asking questions, planning and cast, carrying out investigations, all that stuff. So each performance expectation is gonna get one of these eight practices. Um, then they're going to have a disciplinary core idea from one of these major domains like physical science, life science, earth science, and engineering. Um, and then they're also going to have some sort of cross kind concept that's been highlighted in there as well. And so it's like basically pick one, pick one, and pick one. And that's going to be a performance expectation when you put those three parts together, right? And you can kind of see patterns, patterns right there, right? So that was that cross kind concept. So they're picking from these major parts trying to help you highlight them a little bit more explicitly in your instruction, as well as assessments, because um, yeah, we can't just rely on multiple choice for everything. We've got to sometimes make sure kids can um, analyze data and they can make a model. Those are just things that we got to measure and give feedback so that they get better at that. And then when they go into the real world skill and they need to do those things, they have some background, right? When we talk about the larger structure of the NGSS, how I like to think of it is that for any performance expectation, if you're at the middle school level, there's going to be something at the elementary level and something at the high school level where you're either building off of what they've had before or you're giving them a foundation to be built off of for the next year. And so they're always gonna be related through this, uh, like LS is life science, so that's gonna be some domain. And then um, the disciplinary core idea arrangement um, that that also is used to relate these things between the grade levels. So, for example, like um, elementary school students might do something with parts of a flower, and sixth graders might do asexual versus sexual reproduction, and then eighth graders might do evolution, and then they'll see that as well in high school, right? Um, and these things are all kind of related to each other. They're all within the same arrangement, they're all like life science, and they're building off of each other. And the main benefit of this is that why would you go over like parts of a flower with eighth graders? It's kind of a waste of time. You can uh, go over those easy lessons with younger children, and then you save the harder things for later on that take more time, right? So you end up going deeper with all of the subjects. Because most of the time, middle school uh, science, like biology, is um, usually fairly in depth, but like physics, they'll go very, very basic. So they don't get a lot of very complex physics um, if you just do all their physics at sixth grade, that is. But if you integrate, then suddenly you're able to do a lot with force diagrams and some um, calculations and all that kind of stuff. So that's kind of. Uh, the larger structure is that there's something above and below within that same core, uh, disciplinary core idea. So that's, yeah, you go deeper each time you look back at this. So if we look at MS, LS, 
uh, one dash one, this guy right here, MSLS one dash one. That's part of this molecules to organisms, um, this my core idea. But I just wanted to see the individual standard because this is um, related to, it looks like a disciplinary core idea right here. Um, is 1A, I believe. And so you can see like, oh, structure and function. This is all fairly closely related with cells and multicellular organisms. Yep, that all sounds related. So these are going into like high school LS1-1. Um, it looks like 1-2, 1-3, also 3-1. Um, so this, you can kind of see like, oh, they, they need to have um, things are made of cells and different numbers and types. They're going to need that to be able to um, work on these things with like DNA uh, and systems within multicellular organisms. Makes sense. You got to know what a multicellular organism is to be able to work on a model with it, right? So you can give them that foundation at the middle school level. So that's kind of the idea, is that these end up progressing into more in-depth topics later on. Um, though if you if you look closely, the practice is completely different. The cross gang concept is different. That that progression is of the core idea, the disciplinary core ideas. Um, and you can see that uh, they've got the uh, Appendix E right here. This is a pretty neat document. This shows how uh, an individual disciplinary core idea, um, how that progresses throughout their education, like elementary school, middle, and high school. Like, how are they talking about the universe and its stars? Right. So it shows those progressions. It's got earth science, the ESS, earth space science, We've got life science. Um, they've got their physical science. Yeah, all those guys. Right. So you can kind of see how these these things are progressing and getting deeper and more um, more knowledgeable. I mean, just look at the length. You can see that on the right, they typically have more information in there. Right. So that's the, the display core ideas kind of getting deeper as you go further. Um, if we look at, I think we were just looking at PS1A. Yeah, on that last example. So you can see like, oh, PS1A right here. Um, you can see like that's gonna progress off to the side. Did we do? No, I think I actually changed this. So instead of PS1A, we were looking at, um, I think, just give me a second. Okay, here we go. So we were looking at LS1A, and this we were looking at how um, it gets to cells in the middle school level. They're not really talking about cells in this point. And then um, talking about the cells in the numerous parts, so breaking down the uh, the, the cell into components and looking at that, right? That's a little bit deeper. So that's that's the overarching idea. And then you can you could do the same thing and look at the um the the other appendices. Like they do have progression of the um the practices here. So you can kind of see like, oh here are the SCP, those eight practices. And then you can kind of see the expectation for asking questions at the different grade levels, expectations for models at different grade levels, all that stuff, right? Though you're probably never going to go in there and check that out. That is something that you can do if you're curious about talking with another team member like, oh, yeah, this is this is what we're supposed to be doing at this level. What are you guys doing at your level to support that and, and helping understand how all these things are all related, right? So you've got your... Um, patterns. It looks like the first one is patterns right here that they're talking about. And they've got a couple couple standards there and then cause and effect. Yep. Kind of it's laid out for us so that we can understand how these things are um, consistently used. But as you can see, they're also getting more in depth as you go 
into the high school. Like the, the patterns themselves are getting more complex and the expectation of what you're doing with the practice is also uh, more rigorous when you get to those higher grade levels. Um, and then also there's, this is kind of a weird thing to take note. I don't fully understand this. I'm not going to pretend to fully understand it, but there's something uh, called a topic arrangement, which is slightly different than a, uh, a DCI arrangement. So there's like um, MSLS1 right here. And then these guys are a little bit different. Um, so this is grouped a little bit differently. This isn't grouped based off the DCI arrangements. These are topic arrangements. And so they're very, very similar. Um, I'm Again, I don't fully understand the difference between the two, but it looks like this was like some sort of um, chapter that you might have in a book and the other stuff was arranged more about the, uh, um, the core ideas and how the core ideas were more closely related sometimes. There's a million ways to uh, skin a cat, as they say, right? I don't like that saying, by the way. <laughs> when we're talking about the NGSS, it's both spiraled and it's integrated, which is really interesting because they, they mean two different but kind of related things. So when we say the curriculum is spiraled, it means that they're covering the same topic at different grade levels. So it might be that you're talking about cells at sixth grade, which allows you to then go into mutations and DNA at eighth grade. So it's a little bit deeper of a topic that you might not go that deeply with sixth graders. Like I wouldn't go into types of mutations, that type of stuff with sixth graders, but eighth graders, yeah, I think they could handle that. So you get um, to go deeper with all the subject areas so that, you know, you just don't have gaps um, based off of their ability at the at like sixth grade to do a whole domain of science. So like they get a little bit of earth science, earth space science at eighth grade too, right? That's the idea. So spiraling allows you to do more complex topics later. And then integrated, this is a huge, huge benefit. A lot of people are like, but how are students going to understand the bigger picture or how this forms into a narrative? This is something I've heard a lot is um, teachers concerned that if they don't do like biology, they're going to be like, what now? Like time for something completely different, like that Monty Python sketch. No. <laughs> um, yeah, like it's, it's one of these things where the integrated approach gives you really cool stories. That's not just like life science. Um, so for example, for seventh grade, I looked at Mount St. Helens and did that location and that the volcano exploding and the, um, the changes to the ecosystem, all of that was related to a lot within my, uh, standards at, for seventh grade. Cause I had like plate tectonics, I had, um, ecology, I had some chemistry as well, which was harder to tie into this. Uh, but you can see that there's there's ways that you can bridge gaps between these subjects um, in terms of the phenomenon. And I really liked it for showing them scientific writing in different settings. So they understand CER in terms of like ecology, they, uh, making argument based off observations of an ecosystem um, and how that's similar but different to when you get observations in a lab with a reaction and trying to determine if a reaction has taken place. So they're different topics, different data sets, um, but similar practices. And it's good for them to see that similar structure being used across those different domains because it helps them understand it deeper. Like they, they get a deeper understanding of the practices if they see it throughout the year in different settings. And so that's, I, I think, probably one of the biggest benefits um, that you could do. And really, really cool if you can get the students to actually do this themselves. So if they can actually look at their CERs throughout the whole year or the models throughout the whole year and do some sort of uh, reflection about that and comparing them, that, that would be very, very good. <laughs> All right. 
think that's that's all my slides. Uh, thank you for joining me. This has been Andrew McLaren. Thank you for McLearning with me. I've got a few more offers that I'd like to let you know about. And remember, like and subscribe. For each video on YouTube, I am making an interactive version using HP5. These will be for sale on Podia. And if you click on the link in the video, you should be able to go directly to that product. I also have two demos I'm going to be linking so you can kind of see what they, these products look like. Um, so I would recommend checking out those demos. I also offer one-on-one -on -one remote tutoring through Wizant. Please use the links that I have linked below. That way I can get 100% of the uh, hourly rate as opposed to 75. Each video also has a link for my Patreon and you can join at the $3 level to get some resources I use for tutoring and, or to support the channel. And I also have a $5 raffle level, which you could either get some free online tutoring or five uh, interactive lessons for free. You choose which ones. And then I also have my Teachers Pay Teachers, which has some old lessons that I made from when I used to be a teacher. I may be adding to that. Thank you for spending your time with me. I hope that you learned something.